surgery day. Her surgery number two, I guess, um, laser ablation. It's 6.23 in the morning. I don't know why I woke up this early. But, oh well, I'm up. Um, I am all ready to go to the hospital. We don't have to be there until 10, so I'm going to finish watching my uh, TGIT Shonda shows because I'm up and I don't want to wake anybody else up. Um, I didn't wipe off my little eyeliner or anything last night. I just got in the bed. I don't know. I am anxious because I don't know. Like, I know the overall goals after all the surgery and, you know, recovery and everything. The outcomes, I don't know what to expect after this particular one or how I'm going to feel or what. But, you know, I guess it'll be okay. And um, I'm glad I got to see my baby dance last night. They had previews for their dance competition for Drill Team uh, because they have competition tomorrow. And I don't miss things for my kid. I just don't. But I have to miss our competition. Um... But I know she's going to be awesome. And, uh, I don't know. I just, same prayers, trying to get rid of this anxiety. Um, I had, with medicines and everything else, I had been good on the whole random vomiting Crohn's not Crohn's Lord I apologize for anybody going through that struggle no um, acute colitis I meant to say I had been good on that for about two weeks and then last night I when I had fallen asleep on my shows something woke me up and I ran to go vomit. Um, so, it's really not the time for that. And then, I'm nauseous now. But I'm hungry. But I can't eat anything because it's, you know, day of surgery. I can't eat after midnight. But uh, I think I'm going to take some anti-nausea medicine before I take my regular medicine. And... Just watch my shows and rock out with my out. And, uh, yeah, I'm not going to cut my hair this time before the March 20th surgery. I think I might. But, uh, y'all see me again. Pray for me. So it's about 9, 10 in the morning. I showered and dressed and have my epilepsy warrior survivor shirt on and ready to go to the hospital. Um, for some reason, even though I, we need to leave the house at 9.30, my mom and daughter we're not trying to wake up. This is my mom staying with us. Of course, she has to drive me to the hospital. Um, they weren't trying to wake up today. Like, I had to bribe my daughter to get up and take a shower. Uh, or threaten her. I was like, your grandmother's going to take all the hot water. And so she hurried up and got up. And I had to shake my mom. Like, to wake up. So I guess everybody's tired or else they're just used to this. I don't know. But um, the only one who was ready to rock with me was this one. And she's got business to do. So it's not really about me at all. I'll miss you, puppy.
she doesn't care. So, uh, I guess I'll see y'all when I'm at the hospital. I really need a little bit more information on what exactly is going on. This is supposed to be informative. It's supposed to be helping you all if you're going through something like this. And I don't know what the hell is going on, so I can't help nobody. But, um, all right. I'll see y'all when I see y'all. I'm in my hospital gown in my hospital room with my hospital fro. Um, and so I'm just waiting on everything to get kicked off and started. And um, yeah, uh, my mommy and daughter are in here with me. I'm at Presbyterian Hospital. I didn't like this hospital because of personal family situations. And I, I, when I, the last time I was here, I remembered it being not clean and bright and shiny and maybe it's because of the situation and I hated the doctor, but yeah, it, it's, it's okay, it's okay. Um, see, look, they've even got, this is something that HGV, HGTV would put up, this little wall type situation, that's, that's cute. Um, my baby girl's in here, my mom is in here, and we're just waiting. Um, we're just waiting. Uh, I ain't having no visitors because the flu strain is too real this season. I'm only going to be in here for two or three days. If I'm in here for 10 days, I don't need no visitors besides my family because if y'all get me sick, it's going down. Okay? All right. But, uh, Uh, sorry. Anyway. Uh, yeah. So, hopefully I get more information about everything that's going on. But for now, see you on the other side. Real quick, if y'all could have seen my mama's eye roll, how hard it was from her watching me do this recording. It was like, <sighs> she... <laughs> Best thing all day. Best thing all day. Okay, so I am in the pre-op waiting area. Um, I just talked to the nurse of anesthetist, and uh, she let me know they're going to put me to sleep, give me some more IV lines, um, and do the MRI. Uh, do an MRI while I'm asleep and uh, we're going to have a catheter and a drink but uh, breathe, or a breathing tube but oh well um, I just am ready to get rolled back so um I'm ready to get rolled back, and it's 12:03. So they said surgery at 12 o'clock. They aren't. They don't have the room ready, so it's like going to be waiting here for about 30 more minutes. Um, and they said the surgery would be about four hours. I wasn't expecting that. So um, my mom and baby will have to go get something to eat or my dad is going to bring them something to eat and uh yeah we'll see they're going to do the MRI or put me to sleep do the MRI and then do the laser ablation so whatever all that I guess four hours or so so we shall see what's next Hopefully it's me waking up on some good drugs. Well, a neurosurgeon just came by to see me. Uh, he made a mark or they're going to do
do the stick the laser and um, he said that the only really risk are speech issues because the area of the brain. Hi. Can I see your armband, please? Yes, you can. All right, Miss Megan, four, one, five. That's you. Dr. Laga wants you to sign your pen. Um, but yeah, it's the risk are speech issues and so but he's not too worried about that but the area that it's in could cause issues with that um, but yeah he said it's going to take three hours give or take so um then I just, she has competition tomorrow. Oh, no, you got to be at the thing in the morning. Oh, right. Yeah. Maybe we can get married. I, I'm fine. Mm, my mom was trying to see if my baby wanted to stay at a, in the ICU with me tonight because I will be in the ICU tonight. Um, and uh, I can leave as early as tomorrow if things go well, or maybe a couple of days. We'll see. Uh, I don't know. Don't know, don't know, don't know. Uh, but yeah, I've got the information, I've got the mark on my head. Talk to the anesthesiologist, I talk to my neurosurgeon, and so, um, they're basically gonna do the MRI, like, do the, like, I had the bolts in my head last time. They're gonna pin me down, or pin my head down, and then go in here with the laser and uh, ablate the part of my internal cortex or the anterior internal cortex that's causing seizures. So yeah, I guess I have my questions answered. Let's go get some surgery going. Any minute. What's up y'all? I'm in the ICU. Um, they at the surgery was successful, whatever that means. It's about 8 p.m. I've been out of the surgery for four hours. I've been out of there for a while, recovering, and I'm just waking up. My mom went to give me some food. Um, I'm not accepting or asking for visitors because the flu season is real, and y'all don't wash your hands. But, uh, you know what? They peeled my muffin cat back blue. They messed up my edges. But that's okay. I'm good. That's the only scar. Um, and a little bank button for pain management. Yay. Hey, um, it's Saturday the 9th at 12. 36 in the morning. Uh, they will be back in the surgery for MRI first and then surgery. Um, no, a seizure MRI while surgery about, um, about 12.30, on Friday. Um, I was under, you know, heavy anesthesia. I woke up and talked a bit uh, in the recovery room, which is good because they were worried about hitting my language center, which is a large part of why they didn't resect my insular cortex, which is where my seizures are located from. 
which is why they did the laser ablation and they're going to do the neuro paste device um, next month in March. Uh, I, you know, I'm in a lot of pain. My daughter and mom were here for the whole day. Um, and then my mom was eating me some food and uh, from Chili's and they went went to get some food and went home because baby girl has a concert tomorrow. Sorry it's dark in here, but I'm about to turn on the lights. Um, but yeah, I've just been like sleeping on and off and I just went to go get an MRI or sorry a CAT scan that they ordered the CAT scan was backed up because they had a power outage so I just went to do that and um, the nurse like cleaned me up and I really didn't have to do anything I really had a bad experience with this hospital previously and this my personal experience has been really good um, the nurses the doctors um, everyone has been really kind so far and they've listened to me like they even the nurse during, you know, initial intake when they were putting in my IV and everything and getting my medicines and allergies, is, you know, her last question she asked was, what can we do, what's the most important thing we can do to ensure you have a good stay? I was like, what do you mean? So I was like, it was, is it warm blankets? Is it... Um, talking you through everything and I was like you know all the above and she was like okay so basically just take great care of you and I was like yeah girl thank you and every nurse that I've had today she's has been super nice and um thank goodness I might go home tomorrow, so by the time I post this, I may be at home. I don't know. I might stay a day or two extra. I don't know. But um, they've been taking my blood sugar, and my blood sugar was over 120, so they gave me an insulin shot. Which I was like, what? And she was like, no, don't worry, in the ICU, this is what we have to do. But you just ate. And so this is why your blood sugar is so high. So, I am. Yeah, I'm okay about that. But um, I'm in a lot of pain. I'm about to press my little button of pain-stopping meds and try to get some sleep tonight. Uh, again, I don't like where they cut for the laser ablation, you can't see, but it will grow back, or I'll shave it off again, it doesn't really matter, um, but, yeah, this has been a more successful trip than I expected. And thank you for all of you who prayed for me, who called me, checked on me, um, said kind words and well wishes. It really goes a long way. I mean, I even had my girl send me just the longest prayer. I'm not going to call you out because, you know, I know you got a reputation to keep as a thug in these streets. But, uh... And these are like my big sisters, my sister's friends from when we grew up. And, uh, you know, both of them, you know, called and texted. And a friend sent food the other night. My besties all wished me support and everything else. And 
I just, I really appreciate the love and support because there are some people who I think should be here who haven't even said a word since my first surgery. And so, um, thank y'all. This has really been, the first time was fearful, this time was anxious. And with the help of God and y'all, this has, you know, got me through. And I am, I, I don't know if they're going to let me go on tomorrow or the next day. Um, but it's not going to be a super long stay. But, uh, yeah, everyone just keep being great. And remember, now that it's Saturday... It's only like, what is it, four days, five days until Black Panther comes out? We got our tickets for Friday. So, um, and I'll be able to drive and be awesome. And so it's Wakanda forever. This is what's getting me through this. I don't have a Valentine. Chadwick Boseman is my Valentine. Or no, Chakala is. But uh, I'm going to sleep so I can wake, do wake up calls for my baby and my mama for um, competition tomorrow because I'm that kind of dance mom, even in surgery. Um, and so, yeah, that's all for tonight. I don't know when this is going up. I don't know what the doctor will come and tell me. I guess I'll get on and tell y'all tomorrow. But, uh, again, thank you for the love and support. Good morning, y'all. It's about uh, 6.55 uh, Saturday morning, and I have some good news, but I don't know how to take it. Um... The neurologist said I may be able to go home today unless I'm uncomfortable and I'm really not comfortable going home today just because of my track record uh, with everything else I feel more comfortable being here than coming back up here um, we'll see we'll see how it goes um as far as that, but he said that the surgery was very successful and they were able to um, ablate more of the insular cortex than they expected to and I may experience a drastic redu reduction in seizures and or seizure freedom. I should be jumping up and down right now, right? Right. Um, I am not working right now. I'm on a fixed income with disability. They stopped my disability in November because they thought I was still working at my old job, which I had to leave because of, you know, my health in June. And so they're, you know, Gonna backdate it and eventually pay me hopefully this month at the latest next month. Um, and if I get out and just start job searching, it will be great. I'll be glad to finally be free of the seizures and be working. Like, I really, really will. My fear is that they'll come back in full force and I'll have to stop all this progress I've made. I've been, it's been since 2015 I've begun meeting with doctors and having tests in preparation for these surgeries. And I just, I want more assurance before I start working and 
Social Security is like, okay, girl, you working, no more disability for you. And even though, it just, I don't know how to feel. My doctor just gave me an Ativan. I always have taken them for seizures. I've never taken them for anxiety, but I'm definitely hang, having anxiety before. And my nurse, you know, she's she's super cool and we've been bonding and she just said you know don't don't mess up today today's a good day today you know you found about you found out good news and we're hooked but that line and sinker part I can't even, I'm afraid to go back to work and then start having seizures and have to take off to get this neural pace implant. That would take me out of the month, I mean out of the, out of the game for at least two weeks. I'm sorry, at least four weeks. Oh my God, I can't even think straight right now. At least eight weeks. And so that's the beginning of January. And it would be Jan like September before I really am like under doctor's orders to be able to get back to work. So yes, I want this to be it, but I've had periods um, back in 2012 when I was working at WashU back um, when I had my first round of chemo. Things, things stopped. And when they came back, they came back with full force. And I got fired from my job for WashU. Washington University in St. Louis. It's my sister's alma mater. I went there and worked when I lived in St. Louis. They made up fictitious reasons to fire me because obviously you can't fire somebody for being sick. But they just, they nitpicked at things like I didn't ever take a full walking tour of the campus, even though I was walking on a cane in the winter and I, my seizures are triggered by cold. Like, that was one of the reasons they gave for terminating me. I had to leave, close down my business because I was so sick when I owned an event planning a PR firm. I, you know, I'm, you know, my mom, I talked to her, she said, take it day by day. My nurse is like, celebrate this win today, and after I make this video, I'm going to chill out, watch Vanderpump Rules, and do just that, but I, this change of plans, is either going to be a gift or a curse. I don't know. I don't know. And I mean, my doctor wants me to see him back in about three weeks to decide, or I mean, he's gonna talk with my neurologist to decide what we're gonna do and how we're gonna do it. And if we're gonna continue with the next surgery. Um, don't get me wrong, I don't want a craniotomy. I don't want a piece of metal stuck in my head after having a hole drilled in it. I just, everything that 
I know God's got me because he's pulled me through. But everything that has gone wrong, or that could go wrong, has gone wrong. Um, I had IVIG, got aseptic meningitis. It's rare. Happening. Um, I thought I just had, I don't know, normal neuropathy. It turns out it was epilepsy and POTS. And it turns out it was autoimmune encephalitis. And, you know, reactions from medications and this and that. I don't know. I don't know what to do. I don't know how to feel. I'm thanking God and also asking God for direction because I don't want to do the wrong thing for me, for my daughter. I don't want to stop, start back working and then shebang, seizures hit. And I've lost all my disability benefits, period. And I'm putting stress and pressure on my just father, retired father and about to retire mother. Like, I don't know if somebody's going to say, you know, I'm being a negative Nelly, but this is legit real life. This. This could be the greatest thing, or this could put me in another. This could be the greatest thing, or this could put me in a fucked up position. And me be more of a burden to my family. Um, just. Okay. It's okay not to be okay. I'm going to sit in these feelings for about five minutes. And then we'll shake it off. I know I'm not comfortable with going home today. They can throw that out the window. I'm not. Um but I'm going to sit in these feelings for about five minutes about everything going on. And then I'm going to shake it off, watch some trash TV, and um, and just take it day by day until I know what's needed. And, uh, yeah, yeah, give myself five. Have you ever heard somebody say they almost are going to achieve seizure freedom and cry sad tears, my goodness. Um, my friend, my best friend asked me, who will I be if I'm not sick? I know who I'll be. I'll be the same person who wants to be a wife and a mother. I'll work with people doing events and uh, community events, curbside events. I'll do all that. I just... Uh, I feel like I'm talking for forever. Okay, y'all taking up my five minutes. But, uh, whatever does go down. Whatever smooth game, whatever game, Bahamas. Don't ask me why I said that. Might be the medicine that's making me a little loopy. Um,
Put this in your hands. It's been 12 years. It's been 12 years. Please guide me in the way to go. So my true self and for my best self, guide me in which way to go. That thing keeps going off when I bend my arm. Um, alright, y'all. I'll be back later with something positive to say. Five minutes starts now. This morning I was acting like a petulant child over not getting, um, over the possibility of not getting the neural pace. Uh, implant installed more so because it's like he asked me if we needed to install it later could we do it and I, I definitely could do it uh, but it'd be all this all over again and I'd have to stop working like I'm ready to once I heal I want to be healed and hit the ground running if this if there's really talk of seizure freedom I want it to be seizure freedom and I don't want it to be I don't want to revert you know five six months down the line like I did with chemo or like I did with high volume solumedrol and have to stop and pause my life because I'm back in the hospital so I, I definitely was upset about that and uh, we'll, we'll see in the follow up when I go and get my little jacked up hairline fixed with the dissolvable stitchables, stitches <laughs> but um, I am definitely blessed that the surgery went well and um, sorry getting medicine I'm definitely blessed that the surgery went well and there's no speech impairment and um, this might just be a two surgery thing it's a, if it's a three surgery thing we'll see this has been a long couple of days uh, my baby girl, she had her dance competition today and she's great. She's got videos. And uh, her grandmother's bringing her over here to spend the night with me tonight, even though it's 10. But it's okay. I'd rather her have her right here next to me. Um, I'm going to get out of here tomorrow and go rest, 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 rest. And then Friday, I'm going to see Black Panther for the culture. And uh, just be as awesome as I can be. And hopefully, I remain seizure free as long as possible. Day one count starts now. Hey, so it's Sunday. I'm getting discharged today. It's about 5.50 in the morning. Um, my baby girl came and slept with me last night. She's over there knocked out on the couch. I love her so much. But, um, yeah, they're going to give me some pain medicine to go. And that's not Tylenol 3, thank goodness. 
Stick up for yourself. Stick up for yourself. Advocate for yourself. Tylenol 3 is like me taking a piece of candy. And I kept telling him that. So he's giving me Percocet. Just for a couple of days. While I'm trying to find a pain management doctor. Um, but that's more than nothing. And after my whole super day of sadness yesterday. Okay, thank you. And she's on her way to give me some Benadryl because I have these on again and they're causing sores and everything. Um, they had no hypoallergenic ones for EKG. Um, the but yeah, as much as I was fussing yesterday about the probability of not getting the neural pace uh, implant and what it would mean for me if I got my life jump started and then the seizure started back and I had to come back and start all this over again, my neurologist, my neurosurgeon really wasn't caring about that and everybody just told me be positive but when you have a surgery plan and you plan your life around that it's hard to do so um, especially something this major and especially when it affects not just your life the life of your beautiful baby girl and your parents and somehow my neurologist ended up advocating for me and she told him that she thinks that we need to continue with the neuropace device so thank god I, yeah, I know some of you might be skeptical of why that I would want to have a third surgery want to be done I don't want to have this oh, okay what if the other shoe drops foot and if he got a lot then it's even better if we they do the scan I mean the, the implant it will be even more better and I won't have to constantly sit around with the uh, the daily seizures messing up my life and the, the, just all that comes with it so neural pace is back on it's been a weird couple of days but um it's only almost 6 a.m. baby girl's asleep I know my mama's asleep um I'll call her and tell her to come get us around noon. God bless y'all. And thank you all who prayed for me, thought about me, sent me well wishes, everything. Y'all be good. Hey y'all, I'm finally at home in my own bed. Uh, showered and Freshly shaven, I ain't shaved my legs in like two weeks. Hashtag single life. Uh, and I'm trying to get all of these Benadryl in all the spots where they put stuff where I said that I was allergic to, like the adhesive. They put it anyway. Um, but all is good. Uh, my doctor, my neurologist told my neurosurgeon when he told her about the plan to not continue with the next surgery, she was basically, I'm gonna get her black girl voice. Y'all know what she going through. She been through too much. You need to give her all of this. So I'm, I'm glad she stuck up for me in that way. And I'm glad that all of you have prayed for me. Thank you.